Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be insulating this toaster oven that I use for my power coating projects. So recently I've been power coating a bunch of stuff for my cars and when I started doing the calipers, I noticed that my temperature wasn't getting up to 400 to 425 degrees uh, fast enough or it wasn't even getting close to that on those bigger parts. So I decided to buy some of this seven inch by like half inch insulation that I'm gonna be using on this commodity toaster oven. These toaster ovens are usually cheap commodity items so they don't really put any insulation in them. So all it is is a double walled construction on all the sides except for the front doors. Today we're gonna to take this all apart, put the insulation in there, and we're gonna test on one of my projects to see if we get the temperature up to 400 degrees on these calipers. So stay tuned. So the first thing we wanna do is just kind of flip this over and get to the back side and just get all the bolts and screws out of this thing. So it's pretty easy to take apart. It's just a bunch of screws all around. Maybe a few on the underside. Yeah, some on the underside. The, all the black part right here just kind of snaps off and you have access all around to put the insulation in. So you can see pretty much inside it's pretty basic once you take that cover off. It's just the top, the sides here. The back side is not even double walled. It's just a one piece right here. And then this side, it's got a double wall also. So if you want to insulate the back side, you could make a piece of sheet metal back here. Just a piece of sheet metal folded on the edges for safety so you don't cut yourself. And then just screw it right into here all around. And you could hold another piece back here to insulate it. So I bought this roll of insulation on Amazon. If you guys need some of this, check out the links down in the description for this. This was the best roll I found as far as the amount of insulation you get for the cost. This thing was like $32. It's seven inches wide. I think it was like 22 feet long. A lot of the other listings I saw was only like a four foot sheet and it was the same price as this. So this was the best value. It actually comes with a cutter and I think a glove in there too from the reviews I read. This is like a synthetic fiber. It's not fiberglass and it's not wool. It's like a synthetic wool, but it still puts off a lot of little bits and everything. So you might want to wear a respirator so you don't breathe any of this stuff when you're cutting it. And you definitely want to wear gloves. All right, so I got this thing all done. I ended up putting two layers around there just because I had so much extra insulation. And then I put these two pieces up top here just as another spare because that was the last two pieces left. And then I cut another two pieces right there just in case I wanna do the back later and maybe I'll use these ones on the front doors if I ever decide to do the front doors. But the front doors are glass. And they're kind of hard to attach to as far as trying to get something on there for insulation, but it would definitely help some of the heat loss right here. But other than that, I think the main part of the heat loss is the top and then the bottom. As you saw on the video on the bottom, uh, I was able to just put it underneath this tray, which is usually just a drip tray for all the crap in here for a real toaster oven. I just put it right underneath there and that works perfectly fine inside there. All right, so I was looking around at all my junk that I had laying around and I happened to have a piece of sheet metal that I cut perfectly to fit in here. It's a little bit short as far as height goes, but it's good enough for me to get the insulation in and actually hold it on the inside. Now I'll just rivet it with the holes that are already here to the back of this thing and it'll hold pretty nice. Some of the insulation is gonna be exposed at the bottom because this is not gonna cover it, but it's not a big deal because this is inside, so I shouldn't have any issues with that. All 
All right, so I got that piece in there. You can see right down the middle. I ended up having to use screws because the rivets didn't work out and they weren't long enough. So I just screwed it down. It holds the whole piece. It covers the whole back area right there with insulation. So all the sides except for the doors now are insulated in this thing. So I'm pretty good as far as that goes. So we'll go ahead and test this on my next caliper project now and we'll see if we get it up to temperature. Hey guys, thanks for tuning all the way to the end of this quick video on upgrading this toaster oven for powder coating. As you can see, it's a quick and easy upgrade, especially if you're using a, any kind of toaster oven for powder coating. That way you can actually retain the heat in here and heat up your parts a lot faster. As you can see from the test footage, I was able to get those calipers up to about 375, almost 400 degrees and hold it there for like 10 minutes. So that way the powder actually cures and hardens like it's supposed to in this oven. If you guys find this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel to stay on top of all my different DIY videos, go ahead and subscribe to your channel. Remember guys, for all these different projects, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I wanna thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.